adult infectious yeah back this pain. is this, this is actually one of the big scary oh, categories geez. these are really hard to find but let's talk about how you yeah. can hopefully find them so the scary scary spinal epidural abscess the Good and bad news is, is that we often miss it the first time we see it. I mean, standard of care is to miss it, but that still doesn't make it feel any better for yeah. us or the patient. Yeah. But we know that when we finally do figure it out, and it's often because it's late and they have neuro deficits by then, often they're stuck with those neuro deficits, and we often find ourselves in litigation because of it. Right. Which is why we'd like try to find a better way to do yes. this. But we'll and at see. least we've, we have really raised our awareness of this, and we have learned at this point that the triad of fever back pain and neuro deficit is just not good enough for you us to just throw that out. away yeah, sensitivity really, of 13 percent forget the triad. It. it's like just quit just like, forget you should just throw that away the risk factors are real though often patients do have a risk factor and if they don't have any of these it doesn't rule it out but it makes it less likely so we have to ask good questions is this an immunocompromised patient whether that be beyond immunosuppressants or because they're diabetic something like that do they use iv drugs we know that that leads to hematogenous yeah. spread are they alcoholics that also puts them at risk it turns out yeah. do they have any history of spinal in instrumentation or injections do they have indwelling lines that also hematogenously spread bacteria yeah. unfortunately or do they have some kind of other infection that may have been going on that have seeded this area right and i think the thing for all of us is just i think all of us think about this ivory drug use we ask about yeah. ivory drug use with back pain but we don't really remember that like st steroids increase your risk of this alcohol abuse so it, you have to kind of really broaden yeah when you worry about it. And if MRIs were easy to get and we could just get them right. all the time, this wouldn't be as big a challenge because we just get it. But it's, a lot of people don't even have access to mm -hmm. MRI. It's an expensive test. It takes a long time. It's, you know, there's a lot of reasons why there's a- Claustrophobia, there's a, some people can't exactly do it. Exactly right. Yeah. So the MRI is the thing you need, unfortunately, and it should be an MRI of a pretty wide portion of your spine. Mm -hmm. And if you do think this is what's going on and you have evidence to support it, you want to make sure you have IV antibiotics going and you've consulted a neurosurgeon because yeah. that is ultimately who's going to solve this problem. And because the deficits can be permanent, you want to definitely involve someone who can go in and drain the abscess that needs to be drained. Right. Definitively, MRI is the test to get, as mentioned. Usually, if you happen to send labs, and don't send labs on all of your back pains, but if you do send labs, you will find that there'll be elevated inflammatory markers like ESR, CRP. Um, and I wouldn't use it as a screen generally, but if somebody has a risk factor or there's one, you know, it can be a way to go. If they're normal, that can be helpful. Yeah. So none of these are perfect is the reason that I'm yeah, dancing around is, yeah. it a little carefully. Because you'll read articles that say, you know, if, if, they're, if their CRP and their SED rates are normal, you're good to go. I don't buy it, yeah. actually. I, yeah. I, I, I don't, actually. Yeah. This is all a game of mm -hmm. chance and risk, you yeah. know. So, um, so if you're going to go for the MRI, go ahead and get a wide-ranging MRI because it can have skip lesions. You can't always be sure exactly where it is, and you don't want to miss it. So the treatment is drainage, antibiotics, you're covering staff, you're going big gun. Vanco, etc. You can get tuberculous epidural yeah. abscess, which is POTS disease, POTS disease. In, per, in, in special Depending people. on your population. I know I know you've seen it. Yep. I know I've seen it in our population. Yep, so. absolutely. Here's a little algorithm kind of walk. You start with the back pain, and if they're not even, they don't even have back pain, then don't worry about this. That's, you know, fine. But if they have back pain and they've got neuro deficits, certainly you're thinking about an MRI because yeah. there's other things you want to rule out as well. But if they don't have a neuro deficit, you still aren't done yet. You mm -hmm. need to kind of move into the, do they have a fever? Do they have a risk factor? Do they have that unintentional weight loss that's in our tuna fish, you know, algorithm? Um, do they have any particular radicular pain and a risk factor? If none of that's on the table, then okay, keep thinking about other stuff. But the answer is yes, then you want to work them up. So. Yeah, and the other thing I want to mention is that in the tu uh, in tuna fish, I add another T to my tu tuna fish, which is thoracic. Um, back pain, musculoskeletal back pain is almost always lower back. Yeah. To have thoracic back pain, there's usually something not kosher there. There's something wrong. So you see a diabetic with an indwelling a pick line because they're getting treated for something and they have th new thoracic back pain. I really worry about about that. And um, it's, I don't necessarily run MR, but I might run to a plain film or a CT to look at the bones. Did they end up with something wrong with their bones? Do they have an infection of their bones? Do they have, did they get a compression fracture? Is there something else that's going on here? Yeah. Um, but that, I really worry about thoracic back pain. If I poke around and it hurts them the very in the midline in the thoracic area and it didn't ever hurt before, I worry. Yep. The other spinal infection to think about is osteomyelitis, and this can happen in our older diabetic populations, but also with our IVDU populations, you know, bacteremia and spread from mm -hmm. catheters and all the things that we just talked about in epidural abscess, it could be osteomyelitis instead. Um, and so the workup is very similar between the two 
the two entities, but it, ultimately this may be the diagnosis. It may also be that this is spread from a soft tissue infection that may be mm -hmm. contiguously spreading, for example, in decube ulcers, sacral decube ulcers, it can spread from there, or they may have had some direct inoculation. But it could be Staph aureus that's the most common. In a diabetic patient, you don't want to put all your bets on that. It could be polymicrobial. So these are hematogenously spread, usually at the metaphysis, usually it's the long bones like the femur, the tibia, it can be in the spine as well, particularly in adults. We're gonna send the basic inflammatory labs, the CRP, the ESR, et cetera. And you may start with plain films, but know that they're not perfect. No. You know, CT does look at bones, you know, it's not necessarily cord only that you're looking at here, but MRI is really where you wanna go. And definitively to get the organism to grow out, they need to do a bone, bone biopsy. Interesting. So in some cases, because osteomyelitis is sort of a slower growing, longer term infection, your consultant may not want you to start antibiotics so quickly yeah. here because they want to get a definitive organism. So this isn't one where you're rushing to give antibiotics and they're usually not septic and no. really sick. So no. you can have no cord off here. issue. So the, the cord yeah. is not at risk with this. So right. it's actually fine to wait, which That's I have to exactly. make sure there's no cord issue. Yeah. So, you know, if you do if you do get the go ahead to go and start antibiotics and you want to think about what organisms might be causing it and in those cases you might want to go vanco miropenem kind of big guns there. In some cases, once if it is really truly osteomyelitis in some advanced cases that your ID consultant might even recommend PO antibiotics. It yeah. turns out that's kind of where this is going. Yeah, eventually. Osteomyelitis, yeah. but that's not we're not going there. I'm just mentioning that that someone you might see come in who's on PO antibiotics, antibiotics for spinal osteomyelitis, it's not like crazy. Yeah, that's like, right. <laughs> it's like you could have someone don't, like don't Who's bouncing the back. Treater, yeah, because exactly. the treater is probably more on top of it than we are. Yeah, so. exactly. <laughs> Discitis is another infectious inflammatory complication in the spine to know it. This is on the spectrum of osteomyelitis and often this is what happens before it actually seeds the bone or they're kind mm -hmm. of con in conjunction with one another. But, you know, it's fever, it's constitutional symptoms, they've got the back pain. They can be like full-blown sepsis, that's true, and recently have told you they have some back pain and it may end up being discitis. Um, often this needs a washout, often this, you know, needs antibiotics, mm -hmm. IV antibiotics, etc. And again, it turns out that it's staph. A lot of the time. A lot of the time.